This chapter is on boundary layers. I shall start with a recap of laminar boundary layers. If I have a boundary and I plot the velocity in the x direction as a function of y, the distance from the boundary, I know the velocity at the boundary by the no-slip condition, it is zero. I know the velocity in the free stream, it is v. And I also have another boundary condition, which is that dv x by dy tends to zero at infinity. And this is enough information to define the shape of the boundary layer. I can't calculate the shape analytically, but I can numerically. And this velocity profile is called the Blasius velocity profile. Each layer of fluid exerts a shear stress on the adjacent layers. This shear stress arises from the exchange of momentum at a molecular level, and it's useful to think of momentum diffusing down from the free stream towards the boundary. And the more viscous the fluid, the faster is that momentum diffusion. The boundary layer thickness, delta, is defined as the thickness over which viscous effects dominate. And because the momentum is diffusing predominantly in one direction, up and down, this is a one-dimensional diffusion problem, and the boundary layer thickness, delta, is proportional to the square root of time if we started the boundary moving in a stationary fluid at time zero, or proportional to the square root of distance if we are measuring the boundary layer thickness from the leading edge of a plate. In chapter 5 on pipe flow, we met the Reynolds number. It was defined there as rho VD upon mu, where d is the diameter of the pipe and v is the average velocity in the pipe. We can define the Reynolds number in a boundary layer too, but we need to use a slightly different definition. I'll come to that in a moment, but first of all, let's think a bit more about what the Reynolds number is. The Reynolds number, Re, is equal to the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces. Now let's think about the Navier-Stokes equation. It is that rho brackets dv by dt plus v dot grad of v is equal to minus grad of p plus mu del squared v. And let's say we've got a steady fluid, so the d by dt term is zero. Then we see that the inertial forces are given by the mass per unit volume rho times the acceleration, in this case due to velocity through a velocity field. And we can identify these terms with different types of forces. The terms on the left are the inertial forces, that is mass per unit volume rho times acceleration. Remember that this is the material derivative of the velocity, i.e. the acceleration of a fluid blob. And on the right hand side we have the pressure forces and the viscous forces. So if we consider a steady flow, no dv by dt term, then we see that the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces scales with rho v dot grad v divided by mu del squared v. Now I use a scaling argument, which seems rather brutal, but is actually very powerful. Where I see a velocity, or I see a length scale, I replace those with a characteristic velocity of the system and a characteristic length scale of the system. So on the top, I have the density rho. I've got two velocities, so I put in v squared. And the del operator contains one upon length scale, so I divide through by d a characteristic length scale. And on the bottom, I have the viscosity mu, I have one velocity, v, and I have two length scales because it's d2 by dx squared. So I divide by d squared. Cancelling out gives rho v d upon mu. And so what I have is that the Reynolds number in general is rho v d upon mu. That is the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces, where v is a characteristic velocity scale and d is a characteristic length scale. So for a flow in a pipe, it's natural to choose d as the diameter and v as the average velocity. In a boundary layer, we have an obvious characteristic velocity. It is the free stream velocity. Another obvious length scale is the thickness of the boundary layer delta, but this is very hard to measure. It's much easier, and as it turns out, just as good, to measure the distance from the leading edge, x, and then use this distance as the characteristic length scale. So the Reynolds number in the boundary layer is often given subscript x, is defined as rho v x upon mu, where x is the distance from the leading edge. And we know already that the thickness of a boundary layer increases in proportion to the square root of x. Consequently, the thickness of the boundary layer delta divided by x increases in proportion to 1 upon the square root of this Reynolds number.